So some of them are the Agastya Lopa Mudra Temple in Papanasham and uh, Vellalapati in Madurai. Agastya Temple in Tirunalveli also. And uh, Dasavatra Temple in Diogra. Agastya Muni Temple in Uttarakhand. Malligarjuna Temple in uh, Mahakuta, that is in Karnataka. And in addition to his uh, statues are found in almost all the Shiva and Parvati temples in India and Southeast Asia. The Parvati temple in uh, Sandur, the Patmanabha Swami temple uh, nearby my home, are uh, two such beautiful temples. So Agastya being a Rishi and a Guru is said to have had many ashrams in the length and breadth of India. Ashrams of Agastya are referred uh, to in both the epics uh, Ramayana and Mahabharata. The locations in northern India range from the banks of river Godavari in Maharashtra to the Kanuj in Uttar Pradesh and Agastyamuni village in uh, Rudraprayag. Uh, in the south they are said to be in Tirunelveli, this Podigai, Podigai hills, Agastya Kudam and Tanjavur in south India. With all these, we are looking at an exceptionally large geographical area where Agastya has left his mark, confounding us further in the vast geographical area across the seas from India. The presence is found in Cambodia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand and Sri Lanka. If we choose to leave the borders of India, set sail and travel to Sri Lanka from uh, references to the 9th century Sanskrit play Bala Ramayana by uh, Rajasekhara, we know that the shrine of Agastya was said to have been located in the, uh, in the Sri Pat mountain. Uh, it is also known as Adam's Peak. From there, if we travel to Yogyakarta in Indonesia, uh, like 2500 miles we again found the statues of Agastya in the Shiva temples here. In fact one of the statues uh, from Java, Indonesia has uh, made its way to Singapore Museum also. We will share some more about Agastya and uh, his association with Java further in, the, further in this presentation, further in this, uh, in this talk. From there we travel another 2400 kilometers and we will arrive at the Angur temple and we find Agastya there also. So also our uh, Agastya statues are found in Vietnam and references made to his travel in uh, travel to Mal Malaysia. And Cambodia claims that their 9th century king Indra Varman is a descendant of Agastya. We have now established Agastya's presence. In not just in India, but many parts of Southeast Asia. What is it that made people revere him so much to uh, carve statues of him, name places and natural resources after him? If we look at the stories in the Puranas, epic and later literature, Agastya is ascribed superhuman abilities like humbling a mountain, drinking the entire ocean and restoring balance of the earth. Geographically, we have instances of mountains, lakes, towns and even a star named after him. We have rivers and trees associated with him. Perhaps no Vedic sage can equal the sheer presence of Agastya in terms of timeline or geography as we have seen. So we had left of tracing the presence of Agastya in literature earlier with the epics Ramayana and Mahabharata. Let us uh, journey further in time towards the modern era and we see him appearing prominently in literature from 2nd century BC in plays, stories and historical documents. Perhaps uh, nowhere is Agastya more popular than in the Tamil tradition, a language said to be older than Sanskrit. So there is a small surprise considering that the honor of bringing this ancient language to us is attributed to Agastya itself. The story goes that Shanmukha, the son of Shiva, gave the language to Agastya 
and he in turn give it to the world and you know agathiyam is the grammar text of tamil language it is attributed to agastya itself from legend we go to actual historical references of agastya now as we find that he is credited with compiling the first grammatical text of the tamil language agathiyam even through agathiyam has uh, not survived the oldest surviving text of tamil grammar tolkapiyam refers to the first ever compilation of tamil grammar agathiyam agastya's contribution continues on in legend and history in the literature of this language the sangam literature of tamil nadu which boast of three major sangam or literary uh, conventions that uh, stretched over 100 100 of years refer to him as the chair of the first ever tamil sangam here again uh, there are no surviving text of this first tamil sangam the later sangam literature refer to his uh, chairmanship in the city under the sea near the modern day mathurai in the great philosophical text tirumandiram uh, written by tirumula uh, references are made to agastya as a sage who come from the north and settled in the south a shrine of agastya is mentioned in the tamil epics silapadigaram and ilango uh, by ilango adigal those who are familiar with the story of kannagi will know what uh, i am referring to and another 10th century treatise on uh, gems and diamonds bears his signature name and is called agasti mat but it is not only a hinduism that agastya find mention we see him extending borders even in religion it seems agastya has transcended time geography and now religion as well the first century buddhist text refer to agastya as having learned tamil and sanskrit grammar from avalokitan the buddha to be two great buddhist works mani meghalaya and uh, veeraswalyam talk about agastya as student of the buddha to be he features in the jataka mala by arya sura which takes about uh, buddha's previous lives he is found in the 7th chapter further emphasizing this uh, in the largest medieval era relief of the agastya jataka story in um, uh, in uh, indonesia we can find in borobudur yes borobudur we can find The ancient Javanese text Agastya Parva treats him as a principal guru that is probably why he is also sometimes referred as a Bathara guru in the Javanese language Bathara means male deity or uh, defined ancestor and Agastya was a very important figure in Javanese society because of his strong association with the Shaiva Siddhanta In fact some scholars state that Shiva himself was called as Bathara guru by the Javanese for sage Agastya to be also referred by the same term show us the high esteem they held for this great sage in the Javanese culture there exists text from the 10th uh, to the 12th century in Javanese language that is Agastya related Scholars state that the earliest mention of Agastya actually dates back to the mid first millennium CE but the most remarkable on the Agastya Parva 11th century Javanese language text which is in the form of a dialogue between guru and disciple in this instance Agastya and his son Dridhasu Agastya Mam